I'm very well, thank yeah. you. Well, what I would really ask you about is, you know, I read somewhere about the master plan. You said you had, obviously, a three-bucket approach. You're talking about attendance, partnership, and viewership. So what do you see that, obviously, those have grown in your first year, so what do you see that just kind of going in your second year? Yeah, I think the first thing um, I think most notable about this year is it's a full year of our partnership with Boost Mobile. So Boost Mobile came on as a lead wide marquee halfway through the year, and this season we have the benefit of acting with, activating with them from the beginning. So uh, they were presenting partner at draft um, of our tip off, of our performance awards, so we're really excited and I'm pleased with that partnership and in the process of creating some other new ones. Uh, we announced today um, entering into a partnership with 100 Black Men of America, which we're very excited about. Um, demographically, there's a really good fit, mm -hmm. and then sort of culturally yes. and mission-wise, there's a really good yeah, fit. Um, so as they are thinking about um, mentoring young girls yes. and young boys, yes. um, the women of the WNBA, the game of the WNBA, um, athletes who are at their peak performance and yes. have uh, gone through years of training and dedication and disappointment and bouncing back um, uh, and, and even beyond our athletes to our owners and physical therapists and accountants. So we're just very excited. Uh, the plans are not um, fully baked yet, but we know there's a great partnership and great things to come from that. Well, you know, uh, and by the way, I'm with the agency. Uh, I was reading before I came here, the National Women's Law Center did a study just very, they just sent it to our offices a couple days ago um, on high school participation of girls and they said that this state here, Georgia, has the largest participation gap between number of girls enrolled in school and number of girls participating in sports. I mean, when, when you hear something like that, I mean, how, how disappointing is that? Here? Well, first it breaks my heart, you yeah. know, I think, um, uh, my hope is the presence of the Atlanta Dream mm -hmm. here, um, where those young girls who may not have engaged in sports can actually see women who yeah. are part of a professional league. It's one mm -hmm. thing to be told something, and it's another thing to see something. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love um, to think about how the Atlanta community might be able to galvanize and focus on um, connecting the Atlanta dream to those young girls who may not have participated in sport. Um, and we do all kinds of, it's not just our game, um, which I think is a great testament to the importance and impact of sports, but also a lot of our CARES, the WNBA CARES group, where we go out into the community in many ways for exactly that reason, to um, encourage uh, young people and people my age to, you know, to be to lead healthy and active uh, lifestyles. Now this study was done in, to coincide with Title IX being in its 40th year. I mean, how do you feel about the state of Title IX where it is right now in the U.S.? You know, I'm um, very, very grateful. You know, when you reach a 40th anniversary, you have to sort of reflect back. And I, I think um, that we are now with leagues like the WNBA mm -hmm. seeing the impact of Title IX. Mm -hmm. you know, the last couple of draft classes for the WNBA, we saw young women coming into the league uh, referencing NBA and WNBA players as their role models. So um, I think that is both a testament and a proof point of Title IX and the impact of Title IX. And, you know, quite selfishly, as the president of the league, um, Title IX has helped create um, a pipeline for, for our league. Mm -hmm. uh, well, how would you compare? You know, year one of the job. You know, I read a lot of quotes where you said, you know, year one was kind of like job one training for you. So, how would you compare your second year this year compared to what it was like for you your first year? You know, I'm still on a learning curve. Hopefully, it's not quite as steep as last year's. Um, I feel I now have the benefit of seeing a complete cycle. Um, so. It, it, oper it, it highlights for me both, it, it highlights for me uh, the strength of the league and places where I would like to see even more growth. You know, I'm very uh, intrigued about, uh, we have this incredibly passionate and loyal fan base and how can we interact and engage with them all year long um, and, and maintain um, a connection with them uh, throughout the year. Uh, I am intrigued by the partnerships that we do create, and I think that's a way to help us um, do that.
I write for InsideTennessee.com, so a more Tennessee-specific question for me. A healthy Candace Parker, how good is that for the league to have somebody like Candace playing in it and playing well? I don't know if you saw the game. Uh, yes, that, yes. That would answer the question. So I can put words or I can just say go look at the videotape. But, you know, I think um, we want all of our players to be healthy, but there is no question um, that Candace uh, Parker and the healthy Candace Parker brings incredible um, skill, accomplishment, and just excitement. You know, she's uh, she's a fun player to watch when she's on top of her game. She's fluid. Um, you know, she just does it all. One more quick follow-up. Pat Summit, of course, stepped down after 38 years at Tennessee. Just your thoughts on her and what she brought to the game. Because people like her are part of the reason the WNBA is can be successful. You know, absolutely. I, I have read um, lots of articles. Uh, I've never met, had the pleasure of meeting Pat Summit, but I've read lots of her stories of what it was like early on um, uh, and her role in nurturing and supporting women in basketball when the going was tough, when she was part chauffeur, she was the laundress for the team, she was the coach for the team, she did everything. Um, and from those very tough and humble beginnings to the success that she had. And I think the greatest testament to me to Pat Summit is not only the victories, but I hear the women who have played with her. Um, and the way in which they speak about her as a coach and as a person, you know, that's how you really know somebody's um, made a difference. Okay. Thank you. Can you talk about, let's say you're maybe your two to three year vision for some of the things in the league, you know, I read somewhere where obviously you got three teams now in the black. So what's maybe some other, you know, maybe vision, part of your vision when it comes to league and teams? Yeah, you know, I think um, we will continue to focus on um, attendance uh, and that and gate and those are our measures of bringing more and more people, uh, exposing them to the game. Um, and growing our fan base. Um, we are actively doing outreach to um, organizations uh, that appreciate and value the WNBA to uh, build an even more robust, uh, more robust group of sponsors and partners. Um, and those are the things that we really focus on. You know, I think as I look at the game, while there is always room for improvement, I think the level of play right now is pretty darn good. Yes. Um, and, you know, when we've got 12 of the Olympians coming out of the WNBA, it's just a proof point yes. of, of where we are. So um, I know that if you spoke to the players, they would never say, <laughs> yeah, we're there. Right. Uh, they, they would want to push that right. side of it, but, right. but I feel very good about where the game is and now just want to expose more people to it. Okay, can you also talk about um, David Stern and his commitment to the WNBA and just, you know, how does it feel to be able to work with someone like that? He seems like he's just very committed to the success of the WNBA. David Stern is very committed and he is, um, you know, I'm very, very lucky to be part of his organization and to be part of the uh, MBA, the broader MBA right. family during his tenure. Um, and it's not just his support and passion for the WNBA. I mean, he's the commissioner and he is the ultimate commissioner right. in my eyes. So um, I have a lot to learn from him and I feel lucky that I have that opportunity uh, to learn from him. He's, um, he's uh, tough. He's accomplished, but he's also um, quite giving of his knowledge.